All right, I want to talk about the sum function and how, um, how it works uh, a little more in detail here. So I'm going to zoom in using my control key and my mouse wheel just so you can see a little better. I'm going to start with an example. When we design a spreadsheet, a lot of times we're trying to get data into tabular form, a table. Um, so I'm going to use a simple grade book example here. Uh, let's say that I have three or four students in my class, and you know I, I would expand this later, but let's just say we start with three or four people. Now, and I want to put their grades in. Now, if we want to put them in a table, you know, rows and columns, we could put the names of the people across the top, or we could put the names of the people down the side. Let's just say I have a student named Hong, and I have a student named Mary, I have a student named um, Sally, and a student named Juan. So let's say those are my four students. Now, I could put their grades across the top, like I could put exam one here, uh, exam two here. So I have a choice, really, in how to put my, uh, arrange my data, but we usually want to put it in a table with rows and with columns. I can also, so if I'd rather put my the, the names of the students across the top and the exams down the side, I could do that as well. So let me do that. I could put home here. Mary, Sally, and one across the top like this, and then I could put the exams down the side. I usually like to probably do it like this. I, you look at your data when you're trying to decide how to arrange your spreadsheet because, uh, for example, the names, if they're relatively short, you could put them across the top. If the descriptions uh, are longer, you can always change a column width. So, for example, if I have exam one, let's say this is a history class, I might call this the Civil War. Well, you want, usually want to have pretty good descriptions. Uh, exam two might be um, uh, Reconstruction. Exam three, I don't even know much about history here. What's after Reconstruction? Um, Industrial Revolution. So I can put those down the side, and usually they're a little, they look a little better if your long descriptions are, are in rows rather than in columns. But you're going to have to decide whether you want to put, um, how you want to arrange the data. And usually that's your first decision is to put uh, items in rows and columns. But what I want to get into is um, some of these functions, in particular the sum function. So let's say, let me go ahead and add one more exam, exam four. And if you want to pause this, you can, you can catch up with me. Exam four, what are we going to make exam four? Um, um, I don't know, the flapper era, which is the 20s. I don't know. So let's, let's just say that those are four exams that we're going to cover. I'm going to double click there and correct that. You, you can pause this and you could get that data in. I'm going to actually add some more data. Let's say Hong made uh, on, uh, I'm going to pause mine actually and go ahead and type in all the data, make up some um, numbers. Okay, I'm back and I've got data in here magically quickly. So if you want to pause this, you could put all the data in so that you'll have this data in before we go far, forward. Um, so let's just say that I've got these are the grades for Hong. He's made a 90 on exam one, an 89 on exam two. 75 on exam three, uh, and on exam four he made a 95. Now what might be kind of interesting to do is to get sums or averages of um, all of the data that we have here. So we know what the total or the average of, of Hong is for all the exams. It might also be interesting to get the average of the Civil War exam to see how it compares to the average of the others. So we can use the average function or we can use the sum function if we want a total. Let's just start with the sum function because that's one what I want to get into first. So I could just, uh, just a reminder, I could just actually add these up. I could say this is equal to B4, and I could type a B4, or I could click on B4, plus B5, plus B6, plus B7, and I could press Enter, and that gives me a total. Now, the reason I don't like doing that, and I pointed this out in another video, the reason I don't like doing that is because if I insert a row, like, for example, if I add an exam in between, um, it will not catch that in the formula. I have to go back and manually change the formula. So I'd rather use a range of cells and use a function to, to add these up instead of individual cells. Plus, this would take forever if you have you know 500 um, exams or if you have 200 students. 
uh, it would take a long time to enter all of that in one by one. So what I'd rather use is the sum function. So I'm going to go ahead and type in instead of that function, I'm going to, it's, uh, he's got a total of 349 for all of his points so far. But I'm going to type in equal to, and I'm going to type in the word sum. I'm going to put in parentheses what I'm summing up. Now the way functions work is this. Um, you, you type the function name in an open parentheses, and then in parentheses you put what the function is functioning on. For example, if I had the eat, I'm going to escape out of this for a second, and let's just say there was such a thing as an eat function, I'd say I want to eat, and in parentheses I'd put what I want to eat. I want a burger, I might separate them with commas, and I want fries, and I want a Coke. All right, and I close the parentheses. So this would say the eat function, I, I will eat, I will function on what? What will I function? What will this function do? Well, it will eat. Eat, what will it eat? So that's what you're trying to put in parentheses. Okay, I'm going to sum something, but what will I sum? Of course, there is no eat function in um, in Excel, but I like to think of eating, so maybe that's why I use that as an example. I'll escape out of that. So, but I do want to put the sum function. So I'm going to delete what I have here. I'm going to say this is equal to the sum. And in parentheses, I'm going to put what I want to sum up. So I'm going to highlight a range of cells and see how I'm just, I can actually type that in B4 colon B7, or I can highlight the range, close parentheses. So this is saying I am summing up the range of cells B4 through B7. Okay? Now, so I get the same number that I had before, B4 through B7. Now here's a thing that that I'm going to get in your head, whether it kills me. Every semester I have uh, students that, that put the plus symbol with the sum function. Don't do that. If you're using the sum function, you don't normally use the plus symbol. In other words, don't. this is the sum of B4 through B7, right? Let me come down here, and down here I'll say this is equal to B4 plus B5 plus B6 plus B7. Now look, they get the same answer, right? The sum of B4 through B7 is 349. The sum of B4 plus B5, I mean, this is B4 plus B5 plus B6. This has plus symbols in it, and there is no sum function in this. You don't see the word sum anywhere in here. And when I come up here, you do not see a plus symbol anywhere in here. I don't know why, but a lot of students will do this. They'll say this is the sum of B4 plus B5 plus B6 plus B7, close parentheses. Now, you'll actually get the same number. When I press enter, you get a 349. But you are totally misunderstanding what the sum function does. The sum uh, is to add things up. But the plus symbol is also to add things up. So in this case, you're saying B4 plus B5 plus B6 plus B7. Okay, this that adds up those four numbers. And then you're saying, now, give me the sum of that. Of the sum That would end up being the sum of the one number, which is the sum of already the sum of those four numbers. So you're being very redundant here. You're just saying, give me the sum of one number, and it's going to add these numbers up. So you don't do that. Now, you do occasionally use the comma. I'll give you an example of where you can use a comma. I'm going to escape out of that. You could, for example, say something like, I want the sum of, let's say, B4, comma, uh, B5. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's say B4 through um, B7. Okay, so that is that is a range of cells. But in, I could put a comma. Let's say I'm going to give them um, an extra two points um, on an exam. So I could just put comma 2. So what this is saying is sum up B4 through B7 and the number 2. So that would just take whatever this is and add 2 to it, essentially. So notice it's 351. You see how I did that? You can put commas. Um, you know, you could put a cell reference in here, comma. I mean, let's, let's just say I had something like this. Instead of a 2, I put in um, uh, G, um, let, let's just say um, A11, or A, yeah, let's put A, A11. And then in A11, I put how many extra, ah, in A11, I put the extra points. Let's, let's say I'm giving them 20 extra points. Watch this number will change to 369 because it's saying sum up B4 through B7 and A11. So you're summing up, the sum function is actually summing up two things, two things, a range here and a comma here, and you separate those things in the sum function with a comma. So you use comma, but never a plus symbol with the sum function. Remember that. Never a plus symbol with the sum function. All right, I'm going to take these out. And let's go back to what we had up here, which is the sum of B4 through B7. So it gives me the total of Hong. 
Now, that's the sum function, and I can put here are the total of his grades. I can put the word total there just to help clarify what that is. Now, but a total is interesting, but an average might be better. So I can put the word average here, and what I need is a function that will average up these grades. So I could put, and with average you spell it out, it's another function similar to the sum function, but I'm going to uh, do it like this. So I'm going to press enter. This is the average of B4 through B7, right? Now be careful, don't get the, this number in your average, or it'll distort your average, right? You don't want B4 through B8, because that would include the 349, which is a sum, which would really distort your average. So we'll, I'm going to put that, so Hong's average is 87.25, all right? Now, if I wanted to copy that over, I'm just going to grab the fill handle here, and it'll copy both of these over, right? And so there's the sum of everybody, right? One's got a total of 349, so does Hong. That's weird. But anyway, uh, but their averages are all different, okay? Ooh, I didn't mean to do this, ladies, but it looks like um, the, the ladies uh, aren't, doing as well, it would seem, right? Um, oh, you know what? I think I made a mistake on Mary, and she made an 89 on that test. All right, uh, and uh, and she made a, 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 a 87 there. All right, that, that, that should make the ladies a little better. I don't want to be uh, biased here. <laughs> so anyway, you can see, I can, but these tell me the average of how, so who's doing better in the class? Right now, Mary's doing a little better, right? So, um, if we want to, we can do the same thing over here. We can do a function. We could say average, and we could average up, uh, for example, all of these. So we could put in equal to the word average, the average function, and we could um, highlight these cells, and that will give me an average of um, all of these people. I can drag it down to copy it. And now I see the average that everybody did on exam one is 79. So what was my hardest, what was my easiest exam? My easiest exam, take a look here. Can you tell by looking at it? My easiest exam obviously is uh, the flapper era exam four because the class average was 98, which is substantially higher than uh, the other four exams. So I might say to myself, I wonder why that was so easy. I wonder where we've had where we struggled. There's lots of other things I can put in besides average and so forth. I can also put in, for example, let's come down here and let's say I want to put in the smallest uh, or the lowest grades. Now this is kind of fun. Um, what I want to do is use the minimum function, the min function. Up, oh, I got to start with an equal symbol. Equal m i n, and I'm going to take all of these down to here. And I'm going to press enter. And what do you think will display? It'll display the smallest number in that range of cells, which is this 75, right? So I'm going to press enter. And we can say the lowest grade made uh, that Hung made was a 75. If I pull this over, the lowest grade that Sally made was a 54. Because I used the minimum function on each one. Minimum of D4 through D7. So you see how that works? So that's the minimum function. Now, the cool thing about that is, let's say Sally brought this grade up, and, and uh, you know, she, I, I graded something wrong, let's just say, on the reconstruction um, exam, and actually we found out later that she made a 90. All right, now watch, watch what will happen to these numbers. These will all change, right? Her average should go up, her total will go up when I press enter, but what about her lowest score? Will it change? It was a 54 right here. What would be the number that this will display right now? What is the lowest score you see in the range? It will change automatically to a 65, or it should. Let's watch down when I press enter. You see how the lowest score changed? So this is saying, what is the lowest item that you find in the range D4 through D7? Hey, here's a little fun. Let's, take, let's say down here I want to put lowest grade overall. And this will serve to... Um, um, It, lowest grade in the course. Okay, I could say this is equal to the minimum, and this will illustrate a couple things, how the minimum function works, but also how we can have a range of cells that's not just uh, one row or column. Um, I want to do all of these grades. This is every grade in the class. This is B4 through E7. Now, the way we define a range of cells, in this case, you can define the range of cells by any two corners. This is B4, right? B4. Four, and this is E7. So I said B4 through E7. Now we could also say E4 through B7. You see how those are two different corners? 
any two corners of the range. And I can also put, instead of B4 through E7, I could say E7 through B4. I could say E7 through B4. I could say B4 through E7. I can say E4 through uh, B7, or I can say B4 through E7. Either way, but this should give the minimum of all the grades of all of that big block of, uh, of cells, which is the very lowest grade in the whole class right now that anybody's had is going to be um, a 65. So that's the lowest grade in the course so far. All right, so that's the uh, minimum function. A couple other functions you might want is the, the maximum. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to say the largest grade or the highest grade might be is what we want to call it. Highest. And so that would be the max function. I'm going to highlight all of that. And so Hong's highest grade was a 95. Okay, so looking at this, uh, I can tell um, a lot of information. I've got the, the total of every of all the grades. I've got the average of, of, of the students. I've got the lowest grade each student made. I've got the highest grade each student made. So this is some pretty cool information that would help me maybe evaluate the course. Um, I've even got the lowest grade in the course overall. I could put the highest grade in the course. But anyway, lowest, highest, average, and sum. Those are four functions that we've looked at. Um, so far. Let me show you though, let's say that I was feeling generous. I'm a history teacher here and I'm feeling generous. I'm going to drop their lowest grade. I want to illustrate how functions uh, can work in a formula. So far our formulas have all been functions. Um, the whole formula is a function, but you can actually do something like this. I'm going to, I'm going to put a description here. This is um, the course average with, with lowest grade drop. And I want you to think about this just for a second. I'm going to uh, I'm going to double click right here, and that's going to automatically change the width of the column to fit the largest thing in the column. Watch, double click. Okay, we'll talk more about that later. But I want to think about this for a second. How would I average Hong's grades and drop the lowest grade? Well, I could manually go back in and drop that 75, but look what I can do. I can say, okay, I'm going to sum up all of his grades, these four grades, right? I'm going to sum them up, but I'm going to subtract the minimum grade in that range of cells, right, B4 through B7, right? So that would add them up, and then that would subtract the smallest one from that. And then what I want to do is divide by, hmm, what I want to divide by? Well, I don't want to divide by 4. I want to divide by 3 because I will have subtracted one of the grades, so I don't, I'd only have three grades. I'm going to divide by 3. Now, this will mess up because, remember, our order of operations, we do division first. So it will actually find the minimum and divide by 3, and then it will subtract that from the sum. So what I need to do is put parentheses. I want to put a parentheses here and a parentheses, close parentheses right here. And so that parentheses says take the sum and subtract the minimum and then divide by three. I'm going to press enter. And so Hong's average goes from an 87, we see here, to a 91.3333. So if I drop his lowest grade. If I pull this over, we can see how everybody else does. Um, that's weird. Mary has the same, the same grade. I drop in the minimum grade, and um, Sally's not so well, but she's still better than an 82. Comes up a lot. Uh, Juan goes up to a, a 90 from uh, an 87. So we we see that we can use a function. In this case, we've got two functions: the sum and the minimum, and then we use the division symbol or operator in that same, in that same uh, function. Hey, if you want to be really cool about this. Uh, now, the cool thing is, if the lowest grade changes, we can come back in and it, it'll automatically uh, change our formula. So let's say, mm, I decided that um, Hong actually didn't make a 90 on this first exam, but actually he made a 55. When I come back in, if I change this to a 55, that'll become his lowest grade and it'll get dropped. So if you notice, when I press enter, his grade went down to an 86. Do you see what happened? Because it, the minimum of B4 through B7 is not, now not what it was. It's now this 55. So the cool thing about this is it doesn't matter. I can change this data all I want in here. I can edit. I can, I can make changes. But then um, it will automatically fix that average down here. Now, I would need to pull this over if I'm going to do that. Uh, no, no, sorry. The same formula. is. That's the point is the formula is in there. It doesn't matter. I can change the data. All right. Uh, let's get really cool. Let's add one more function. Let's talk about the count function. Uh, I'm going to type, say, the number of grades, okay? Now, I'm going to use something called the count function. I'm going to equal to count, 
and I want to come up here and I want to count how many grades I have. So this is the count of B4 through B7. I press enter and it gives me a four. And you might think to yourself, well, that's pretty straightforward. There are four grades, and so you get a four. But here's where things get a little bit crazy. I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Um, supposing that uh, Hong uh, was absent and he didn't take the Industrial Revolution um, uh, exam. So if I delete that exam and what happened down here to the number of grades? The number of grades went to three because there's nothing there, um, right? And that makes sense. There's only three grades there. But what it's actually doing, it's not. it doesn't know what a grade is. It just knows what a number is. So it's saying there are only three numbers here. Now, what would happen if I put a zero here? If I just said, okay, I'm going to give Hong a zero until he takes that exam. If I press that, there are now four grades there. It counts that zero as a number. Now, where this can mess you up is if you look at the average. Um, look at the way the average does in here. The average says B4 through B7, right? Now, what I want you to think about for a second is it's, it's dividing by what? It's adding up four grades, right? It's, it's, it's adding up these four numbers right now and dividing by four, right? And so that gives him an average of 59 point, um, what was it? His average is 59.75. Man, he's barely, barely got, um, he doesn't have his D yet. He's not passing, right? He's 59.75 because he made a zero here. What if I take that zero out and I leave it blank? What do you think is going to happen down here with this 59.75? Think about it just for a second. If I delete that zero and there's not a grade there, man, his grade goes up to 79.66. Let me do that again. Zero here. 59.75, but no grade is 79.66. How come? Well, it's because the average function adds up the number of numbers that it sees and divides by the number of numbers, and a blank is not considered a number. So this can be kind of, um, can mess you up sometimes uh, if, you're, if you're trying to figure out your grade, for example, or if you're a teacher, or if you're doing any financial data and you think that a blank cell is a zero, it can really mess you up with things like the average function. So sometimes I like to use the sum function uh, and then divide by a particular number so that I don't have to worry about that. If I sum and divide by four, it'll always add up the number and divide by four. In this case, it's adding up the numbers but dividing by three because there's only three numbers there. So that can mess you up. And notice how the, the count is the number of numbers. A blank is a three. So the same thing here. So just be careful of that if you're doing the, the grade calculation, um, uh, a grade calculation or something like that. Watch out for blank cells. Um, you know, what if we put in NA, like uh, he didn't take the exam and it's not going to, it's not applicable to him. Uh, he did an extra credit project instead of that. Well, that's not a number either, so the count is three. There's only three numbers. The count is always that. So the last thing I want to do, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more again so I can show you this one last little thing. Supposing I want, okay, I think I did that right. I'm going to delete uh, all of this stuff here. Just for a second to show you something, I'm going to go ahead and give Hong a grade back of, uh, let's say, 90 here. All right, so I've got this data here. There's this thing called AutoSum, and I, I really hate AutoSum because so many people use it, and it, and it causes problems because they don't really know what it's doing. So here's the deal. If I click in here and I go over here to AutoSum, it'll sum up things automatically for me. In this case, it just sums up what's above. Okay, if I highlight something and I say I want to auto sum on this, let's try this. It gives me a sum down here. Did you see what it did? I'll undo that. I highlighted all of this data and it automatically gave me a sum down here at the bottom. Well, that's great uh, and it is quick and easy to do, but you need to know how these numbers got here. If I click on this 329, notice what it did. It did a sum of B4 through B7. It put in a sum function. You could type that in yourself and just drag it over. And that's what I prefer you do so that you don't get some erroneous results. Sometimes uh, you'll, you'll see something uh, and it won't uh, auto sum like you think. For example, if you add this up, this works fine. I'll click auto sum there and it put 329 down at the bottom. But supposing I had like some numbers like um, from 1980, uh, there was a, uh, let's say Beaumont had a population of, um, I don't even know what Beaumont had, but let's just say it was 115,000. And then in, um, in Port Arthur, 
had a population of 54,000. Right, and then orange had, I don't even know what orange would have, but let's say orange had 32,000. Let's just say, oh, orange had 32,000. Now, if I do auto sum here, if I say I'm going I'm to sum up all of these right in here, right? If I click auto sum, oh, hold on, let me do that again. Um, all right, if I do auto sum in here, what it's going to do, if I click right here and I do auto sum, Here's where it can get you in trouble. Notice it, it sees 1980 as a number. It didn't see Hong as a number because Hong is not a number, but 1980 is a number. So it tries to include that in the sum, and that's where auto sum can get you into trouble. So I, I, I let you use auto sum, and there's actually average and so forth that will you can do the same thing. But I like to avoid it um, because it, people don't understand what it's doing sometimes.